Welcome to Excel 2013 Statistical Analysis video number 64. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook file or the PDF files and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we want to talk about building a confidence interval for a population difference when sigma for both of the populations are known. Now remember, throughout this whole class, when sigma is known, we use z. If it's not known, we use t. So we'll get to use z in this video. Now, last video, we talked about a new distribution, the sampling distribution of x bar 1 minus x bar 2. And we, we showed that all these formulas will work. Now, if we go out and take sample 1, sample 2, and take the difference between those, that'll be our point estimate for the population difference. We also saw last video that the standard deviation for the sampling distribution of sampling differences, that's it. Now, if we're going to build confidence intervals, this will be our point estimate. But then we need to add some to both sides to get a range of values. And we'll say something like, hey, we're 95% sure that the population mean will lie between these two values. If this is our standard deviation, then to add the margin of error to each side, all we need to know is number of standard deviations. And guess what? That's where z comes in. z times our standard deviation. That will give us our margin of error. And then our confidence interval is, oh yeah, our point estimate, the difference, plus or minus the margin of error. Now, this is over in the PDFs. So there's a bunch of uh, defined variables here. But let's go over to Excel. Here's our example. Two cities, Bradford and Kane, are separated by only the Conwango River. A random sample of annual incomes from both cities was taken. Sigma is known from past data. Bradford's sigma is 6,000 bucks, and Kane's sigma, or standard deviation of the population, is 7,000. Build a 95% confidence interval for the difference between the two city population annual income means. Now we have our two data sets, sample of incomes from Bradford, sample of incomes from Kane. But before we do that, right at the top, let's put our sigma. So sigma for Bradford is known, 6,000 tab. And for Kane, it's 7,000 and enter. Now we can calculate our sample size. And we're counting numbers. So I'm using count. And I'm going to go for the first one. Control Shift Down Arrow, Shift Enter. So we have a sample size. And that's N1 of 40. Now we'll calculate the mean, average. Control Shift Down Arrow, Shift Enter. So we have a sample mean of 38,010. Now our population variance, let's just go look at our formulas over here. We looked at this last video. But we're going to need the variance from the first population divided by the sample size for the first sample, and variance for the second population divided by sample size for the second sample. The order of these is very important. Now a trick that we're going to learn right here and right now, and over our next uh, couple of videos, we're going to have more and more complicated formulas. But since we're going to use these things, I'm going to calculate it in the cell. And then when I get to calculating the square root, I'll just have those two things to add. Remember, it's just variance from the population divided by sample size. So let's calculate variance equals, well, we were given standard deviation, so we will square it. Now here's the cell. For Sample 1, I'm going to say equals variance from the population 1 divided by sample size 1 and enter. Now let's go ahead and do it for Kane. Equals count, because we're counting numbers. Control Shift Down Arrow, Shift Enter. The mean equals average. Click in the top cell, Control Shift Down Arrow, Shift Enter. Now we can calculate our population variance for sample 2 equals 7,000. And when we square that, it better give us 49 with six zeros. And sure enough, it does. Now we'll calculate this little inside part right there equals the variance for population 2 divided by sample size 2. All right. 
Now we can calculate our point estimate. Remember, if we're going to build our margin of error, we calculate our sample difference and then plus or minus the margin of error. So our point estimate equals, hey, let's take the first sample of incomes minus the second. And when I hit Enter, I get 3,004 bucks. Now our confidence interval is going to be 0.95. That means our alpha equals 1 minus. That's the risk that our population difference is not in our interval 5%. Now if we're doing confidence intervals and we have our point estimate, we're going to have to add some to both sides. So if we drew a picture, we'd have to split that alpha sum into the top, sum into the bottom. So equals alpha divided by 2 and Enter. Now the standard error, that's this formula right here, equals square root. And now I want you to notice something. We're adding these two things, and we set it up so they're next to each other. So I'm going to make it easy on myself and use the sum function. Highlight the two cells that are right next to each other. That's a range of values. Close parentheses, close parentheses. So the idea of using Excel to make a formula like this less difficult is we set it up first, second, and calculate the little inner bits and in cells, and then do a simple formula like this and Enter. And that is our standard error. Now the Z, that's number of standard deviations. And we need it for the upper end. So I take just this 0 0.025. And the function, and remember, we're allowed to use the normal standard functions because we showed in our last video that the sampling distribution of sample differences is symmetric. Not only that, but the central limit theorem, when we have our sample size big enough, will allow us to use these functions also norm dot s. And remember, we know sigma, so we can use the norm s's, which gives us z. Now the dist, as you remember from so many times in the class, that gives us probability. The inverses always gives us the value. So tab, the probability, well, it's not 0 0.025, because these functions always calculate from negative infinity up to some x. So I'm going to say 1 minus. 0 0.025, that will give us 97.5%. So when I close parentheses, that gives me the Z on the upper end. Now the margin of error, remember Z is number of standard deviations. That's it, 1.95 times our standard error, or standard deviation for the sampling distribution of X bars, and Enter. So there's our margin of error. That's our point estimate, so we have to add and subtract our margin of error. So for the lower number, hey, I'm going to take my point estimate. That's the difference between these two cities' income, and subtract our margin of error. So the lower number will be 32. And we have the difference between our two sample incomes. So we take that plus our margin of error. And it looks like we get 32 bucks and 5,976. So just as we have done many times so far in the class, we write our conclusion. We are 95% sure that the population difference between the incomes in Bradford and Kane are between 32 bucks and 5,976. Now, something interesting to note here, our next example, we're going to use the same example, but we're going to do hypothesis testing. If we calculate a confidence interval, we actually can do a type of hypothesis testing here. And we know that this interval does not contain 0. So then we would conclude that there is a difference. So yeah, it seems like there is a difference. Hey, the difference between Bradford and Kane annual income is about 3,000, about 3,000 bucks with a margin of error of about 3,000 bucks, right? And this is the technical description of our confidence interval. If we construct 100 confidence intervals, we are about about 95 of them would contain the population difference and 5 would not. All right, so in this video, we saw how to construct a confidence interval for our difference point estimate. All right, next video, we'll do hypothesis testing. All right, we'll see you next video.